Hey everybody and welcome back to some more oxygen not included. Last episode we set up a new greenhouse over here on the left for our bristle blossom as well as a new greenhouse over here on the right for our pincher pepper seeds all with the plan to eventually be able to make a stuffed berry over in the gas range over here. Unfortunately we didn't quite get there in the last episode due to the fact that we do not have any natural gas available to use the gas range so right now we are limited to only being able to use the electric grill to make ourselves these gristleberries here but i have a plan that hopefully by the end of today's episode we'll get this gas range up and running and hopefully we can replace the meal lice that our duplicates are currently eating with the much nicer stuffed berries that they are gonna love just so much more than what they're eating right now and to do that we need to get natural gas and quite a bit of it as well if we hover over the awaiting fuel icon over here on the right you'll see that we need five kilograms of natural gas in the gas range to begin production and so i started crunching some numbers and the people in the comment section pointed out that the fertilizer synthesizer this guy right here that originally i was going to put in this room here actually outputs natural gas if we look at it in here fertilizer synthesizer this guy it produces 10 grams of natural gas per second as well as 120 grams of fertilizer 3000 dtus of heat and overheats at 75 degrees celsius the main thing that we are after here is the 10 grams per second of natural gas so we need 5,000 grams, five kilograms, to get the gas range working. And looking at the food calculator to feed our colony of eight, we only have to have two stuffed berries made per day because each stuffed berry provides 4,400 kilocalories. And so should, in theory, feed one duplicate and then last that duplicate for four days. They should only have to be once every four days and everything should be good. So if we only need to make two stuffed berries per day, that means that we need about 10 kilograms of natural gas in our gas range per cycle right and so 10,000 grams of gas 10 kilograms of gas and only 10 grams per second in the fertilizer synthesizer so I did some research it turns out that there are 600 seconds 10 minutes in a cycle in this game and so with one fertilizer synthesizer you will get 6,000 grams of natural gas per day if you is if your setup is optimal and you actually manage to get all of the natural gas into the gas range and so i think if we set up two fertilizer synthesizers and we use those to produce natural gas we should get ourselves twelve thousand grams of natural gas which is more than enough to actually make the two berries i don't think they actually require the full five kilograms by the way i think they only need uh, maybe about three or four kilograms of natural gas but you need five in there to actually get the machine going and so I'm hoping that if we set up two of these synthesizers and we use all of that natural gas, we store it and we pump it into the gas stove, that should be enough, hopefully, to get this guy up and running and to get us moved completely over to those stuffed berries. That's the plan, at least. And to do that, I am thinking about putting those down here in the bottom left, mostly due to the fact that they produce quite a large amount of heat, 3,000 DTUs per cycle, which is not quite as much as the coal generator. I think the coal generator produces about 9,000 DTUs, which is obviously much much higher but of course where possible i would like to try and make sure that our base stays nice and cool so we'll dig out this area over here and whilst we wait for our duplicates to go ahead and uh, dig that room out i've also been thinking about moving our exosuits here because it kind of feels like we don't need exosuits here right now most of this area after the exosuit is still oxygen like they can breathe in this area that they're in right now they don't need to be wearing an exosuit to get here um they only really need to be wearing an exosuit when they go and they feed or tame or shear the drekos and we only ever have one duplicate who feeds the drekos so i feel like we could probably have one checkpoint and one exosuit by the door of the drekos and then not have an exosuit for this whole area over here and i'm thinking actually of moving the exosuits over to the other side of our nature reserve over here and maybe start looking into exploring this side of the map and maybe digging down over this way as well i think that is probably a better idea i think right now they're wasting a lot of time and giving up a lot of speed by switching over to that exosuit when they uh, when they come and, and enter this area of the base which i don't really think is is too necessary 
We'll come back to that though, because so now I do want to go ahead and make sure this room actually gets built. So one, two, three, four. The floor is going to go here. I'm going to make the floor entirely out of airflow tile, because of course, the way the natural gas generator works is you pump in uh, dirt, you pump in phosphorite, which we're going to get from our Dreco, so having that close by is going to make things faster, and you also pump in uh, polluted water, and the generator will output fertilizer, of course, and also natural gas. Now, unfortunately, the natural gas comes out just around the generator. There isn't like an output pipe where you can actually just point the gas where you want it to go. It just enters the atmosphere around the natural gas generator, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little room beneath the room with the fertilizer synthesizers, and that room is going to just contain a couple of pumps, and those pumps are going to take all the natural gas, filter out anything that's not natural gas, and send the natural gas up and over into our gas range for use in the food making process. Now, to do that, we are going to have to dig out a little bit of a room here, and I do want all of this to be surrounded by insulated tile like so. We can go ahead and dig out these tiles right about here and continue the ladder along like so. I'm thinking I'll probably move this storage bin and... Although originally this was meant to be a chlorine tank, I'm also thinking about setting up a separate chlorine tank somewhere else because I do still want to be able to store our bleach stone somewhere. And as I've been saying for a long time now, we do also need to start storing our slime somewhere that's not accessible by our duplicates, right? Because otherwise we end up with a situation like this where a whole area is just full of slime lung. And so I do plan on changing that. We are going to set up a new chlorine area uh, somewhere soon. Uh, but for now, we're going to work on this. I would also like to try and get some more hydrogen into this room up here. You'll see that we're almost at the point where this top half is like half oxygen, half hydrogen. And so maybe, just maybe, if we kind of dig over into this room here, we could pump the hydrogen over into this room. Hydrogen is pretty nice in that if you just put the pump at the top of the room, it will always end up in here because the hydrogen always rises to the top. And so I think actually, if I just delete this one tile that we built here and dig over into this room, we might be able to go ahead and pump all of this hydrogen over and into our Dreco farm, thus making it just a little bit more effective at what it does. Let's go ahead and get our synthesizers down. So refinement, fertilizer, synthesizer. And for now, we'll just go ahead and spread these out a little bit like so these guys do require power so we are going to have to run power wire over to here and our power grid is a bit of a mess right now it's a little all over the place but i'm thinking that we might just pull from this network i think this will be fine if we just kind of come down from here and connect this up like this and like this I think that should work out just fine. I am going to make these digs a slightly higher priority so they actually uh, get done fairly soon here. And then we can put our gas pumps down and our filters down and hopefully that works out. Now, we do need new research actually. That does remind me because ideally, if we only use 10 kilograms of natural gas per day and we produce 12 kilograms, we're going to slowly build up a surplus. And in an ideal world, we would store that surplus so that if anything happens to our setup, we have natural gas still ready to go for our duplicates to use. And that is of course where this guy comes in the gas reservoir, which allows us to store any gas piped into it. And so I will take that. And also the thermo sensor here might make its debut in today's episode because already our pinch of pepper plants are not at the correct body temperature to continue to grow. Ever since we dug it out, the temperature in this room has plummeted. It used to be like 36, 37 degrees. Now that there's oxygen in here and now that there's a lot of space, it's dropped down to 34.5 degrees, which is just 0.5 below where it needs to be. And so I think what we are going to have to do is uproot this plant here to make room for a space heater to go right about there. And I'm thinking what we will probably end up doing is putting down a thermo sensor in the top left-hand corner of this room here and essentially have automation wire to turn the heat sensor on whenever the thermo sensor detects that the room is less than 35 degrees Celsius. That way we can always keep this room at the perfect temperature for our pinch of peppers. That does of course mean that we are going to need to surround this room in insulated tile, at least the bottom half here, just to make sure that our duplicates bedrooms do not get uncomfortably hot uh, to where they can't get a good night's sleep. And speaking of duplicates bedrooms, let's go ahead and select a seed. These rooms were too hot, I believe, for the brine seed which can only grow between 10 and 30 however this guy can grow between 0 and 100 so i will plant that and then this one is not this okay i want to check real quick which plant it was that was emitting the floral scent i'm pretty sure it's the buddy bud because it would be a uh, cruel joke 
to put the floral scent plant into Mima's room. She's the one who has the uh, the allergies to that floral scent. So we'll go ahead and put those in there. That should increase the decor and therefore the morale of those duplicates. That would be very nice indeed. These are all open now, which is good. I'm going to cancel that real quick just so they can actually get in and do the digging they need to do. And I think for now, I will put down two gas pumps, one here and one here. Now, the natural gas is quite heavy. It will fall down beneath the oxygen, but I don't think it will fall quite as low as the chlorine or the carbon dioxide. That said, I would still like to make sure that this room is sealed on both sides. So I will put mechanized airlocks either side of this just to make sure the natural gas stays as much in this room as possible so that when we do pump it out, we can make sure that we get as much of it into our uh, reservoir as we possibly can. And so... Whilst we wait for that research to complete, we also do have to think about where we're going to put the reservoir. And I do kind of want to have all of these machines in the same place. So I'm thinking of getting rid of the exosuit forge for now. We don't need any more exosuits at this moment in time. And I'm also thinking of moving these four storage compactors down into a different room. Originally, I did plan to have this be my storage compactor room, but I really want the uh, the gas range and the electric grill to be a little bit closer to my bristle blossom and my pinch of pepper nut. Again, just to try and decrease the amount of travel time that our duplicates have to go through on a daily basis. And so for now, I'm going to go ahead and put these down here in this room. I'm going to put down a couple of storage bins right there. And that also reminds me, we've still not moved these here, these uh, three suits that we have. And every so often, we do still have a duplicate come down and disinfect these suits, which is such a big waste of time. And so hopefully, once we get all of these storage bins online, we can copy the settings, we can paste that over here, we can delete these four. And I don't know if we can actually store... This is why we need to make sure that clothing is checked so that our duplicates can actually go and grab these, put them in here, and not have to worry about disinfecting them every single time. That would be fantastic. We'll also go ahead and, of course, hook up power to our two pumps, like so and like so. And then we also need to make sure that we have polluted water going into our synthesizers here. Thankfully, we do already have polluted water right here. I'm also thinking about getting rid of these thimble reeds, by the way, because I don't think we really need them. They do use our polluted water, which is not a big deal. We've got quite a lot of polluted water. In fact, we would like to get rid of our polluted water faster than we are getting rid of it so we can move this polluted water into the system. But mostly, I think they're just taking our duplicates' time, and I don't really think it's necessary right now. I'd rather our duplicate focus on the Drekos over here as opposed to... Uh, to harvesting these and so i'm gonna uproot those and we'll delete these hydroponic tiles in just a second here but before we do that let's make sure that we have our polluted water come across down and we'll go one more tile across down and then of course liquid bridge like so and liquid pipe bringing that down and into our fertilizer synthesizers nice good stuff now, ventilation-wise, we do have to have gas coming out of here, of course. And speaking of ventilation, our new research has just completed itself. And so now I would love to make a gas reservoir. And boy, oh boy, is that thing big. So I think we'll probably put it right about here, maybe. We could always put it on this side, I guess, and move the, uh, the machines here a little further in. Let's increase the priority on the deletion of these guys real quick. And also set the priority of these just a little bit higher so that they go and move all of that stuff out of here and down into those compactors. And whilst we're waiting for them to do that, let's have a look at our new skills that we have available. Both Mima and Stinky are both available for an upgrade. These are the two duplicates who we really have to keep an eye on at this point in time because they're both getting quite high on the morale requirements. They are both ahead right now, but for example, if we go ahead and try to give Mima like rocket piloting, you'll see that in the top left there, she has got nowhere near enough morale to take on rocket piloting just yet. And so for now, I think we'll go with something simple like improved construction, the classic that we've been giving to everybody. And then Stinky is an interesting one. We could give him construction three. That's not too bad on the morale front. He should still have enough morale for that. Simultaneously, we could always give him something like improved tinkering or even improved strength to make him tidy better. I think we will. I think we'll go with improved strength for now just to make him a more rounded duplicate and just also to try and make sure that his morale is high enough for the skills that he has. And speaking of duplicates, we do have a new blueprint available. And I think we'll go with the Pufflet Egg. We actually don't have any puffs just yet. The puffs are non-aggressive critters that excrete lumps of slime with each breath. I think they also convert polluted oxygen into regular oxygen. And so if we released some of them kind of down here in this area, I think they would slowly but surely start to convert that polluted oxygen into clean oxygen. And whilst doing that, would also excrete a little bit of slime as well. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a couple of deodorizers around here to try and mitigate the um, polluted oxygen issue that we are having right now. It's a little bad, and so hopefully just throwing a few of those down is going to start to clean up some of this massive amount of polluted oxygen that we've got down here. I do want these to be moved, because I would like to have the reservoir to the left of that. I'll also increase the uh, priority on the exosuit deconstruction as well. Did they move the, the suits here? They did. Fantastic. Okay, so nobody should be going back down there anymore. That is perfect. We will go ahead and set the synthesizers to a slightly higher priority because they do require that constant supply of both dirt and... Is it phosphorite? Is that what they need? Yeah, phosphorite. We'll also hook up power to this gas pump over here to make sure that this guy can actually do what he needs to do. We'll have that run through the floor like that. And then, of course, gas vent can come out of here. Uh, we are going to have to have it come down, I think. Like, we can't just go up and across to this room because there's no pathway there. But if we do something like this and then just have that go up and across and for now just pump out right about there that should work out i think quite nicely and should increase the amount of hydrogen in this room over here we'll throw it out of it like that and i think that is all good i'm also thinking of moving the water lock by the way if i do get rid of the exosuits like if i move these i think i'll try and move the water lock somewhere over here so that you only have to go through the water lock to get to the draco room that should stop the hydrogen coming out and it'll also make sure that anyone who goes through the waterlock has an exosuit on and thus doesn't get that soggy feet debuff. But like I said, once we get this area here sorted out, like once we get this sealed off so that uh, the natural gas doesn't come out, and once we get all of this oxygen here turned into blue oxygen, and once we get rid of all the chlorine and the hydrogen, this area here should become quite a breathable area, and uh, our duplicates shouldn't need exosuits to come down and provide the fertilizer synthesizer with dirt and phosphorite. That's the idea, at least whether or not uh, we end up getting there is a different question. Uh, we are already getting natural gas pouring out down here, which I'm not a huge fan of. The idea here is that as soon as this is set up, which it almost is, by the way, as soon as this is set up, though, the plan is to just have this be a completely locked off room so that no gas can come in or out that's not from this room up here. And so hopefully all of the natural gas should just sink down and we shouldn't have a problem with natural gas leaking out of the base. Hopefully uh, we will get rid of these gas tiles here we don't need that we also don't need this anymore actually now that i think about it so we'll get rid of you as well we do need to get rid of that so we can actually get our gas pipe up to where it needs to go that's why i'm getting rid of these here they have gotten rid of the uh, gas range and the stove and so let's go ahead and throw down a reservoir like so and we're going to have the gas pump in to the reservoir something like this and then they're going to come out of oh no wait that is the wrong way around it's going to be coming in like this and I think I might have it come in like this just to reduce the number of gas tiles there uh, because we are going to have somebody cooking in here. And so decor does play a bit of a factor. And then from there, food wise, we need to have our electric grill, which I guess we'll have a little bit further out and our gas range, which we can put right about there. Nice. We will, of course, hook that up to the gas like so. And we'll hook all of these up to power as well. Boom and boom. And that should be pretty much everything taken care of. As soon as we get the filter down for the gas to make sure that only natural gas makes its way up here. Everything should be pretty much good to go. Now, the good question here is where do we want to put that gas filter? I guess we could put it right about here like that. And if I get rid of this pipe or cancel that pipe, we can have all of the gas come in here and then have the natural gas continue on up like that. And every other gas just simply come out and be revented here. There shouldn't really be too many other gases, but just in case we have things like oxygen or carbon dioxide in there, we can always go ahead and, and have those pumped out into this area, which is quite dense. But again, I think we should be hopefully okay. These are all set to a high priority, so hopefully this will get built fairly soon here. I'm also going to set these walls to a high priority as well, because I would very much so like uh, those to be built as well. Why do I have a gas pipe going up? The wall there oh no of course i do need this gas pipe here my bad we could also do with having a ladder there actually because otherwise they are not gonna be able to build that gas pipe so we'll get that going as well and as i mentioned earlier i do also uh, want to expand this tank of polluted water i'm thinking if we get the time if we can get this fully set up i might try and make this just a little bit bigger like that so we'll build this room out, we'll seal it in, and then we'll cut a hole in the floor to allow that water to flow down, at which point we can go and turn this pump back on, start pumping all the water back over into here, and hopefully that will work out quite nicely, and hopefully we can start to clear out yet more of this water over here. Let's throw down that space heater over in our room here. Do we not have 
Oh, they have not rooted this yet. Oh my goodness. Everybody is just so busy doing so much stuff right now. Everyone's working non-stop that they've not managed to uh, not managed to take that uh, pinch of pepper plant down. So I want you making gristleberries forever, all the time. And that does remind me, actually, that I would like to specify that our duplicants do not eat gristleberries. I don't want them eating them at all. And I also don't want them eating the gristleberries either once we make them. I think they will appear here after we make our first set. But I don't want the duplicants eating those during their meal time. I want them to save those so we can use them to actually make the stuffed berry. For now, I want them to continue to eat the meal wood, even though it does have that slight hit to morale. I do notice that despite the fact that we're not pumping hydrogen out yet, this vent is already overpressurized. And so I'm thinking, yeah, we're even going like slightly over 2,000 grams there, which is not great. I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea. If we just put a few airflow tiles in here, like ideally... If there is enough hydrogen in here, it should push the oxygen down anyway. And so I think putting airflow tiles in there should be fine. The only trouble really is if the hydrogen ends up in here. But already this is quite dense as well. So I don't imagine the hydrogen escaping anymore. This guy is online now. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and lock this door here. Because I don't want any of our duplicates coming in or out of there. I don't want any of our natural gas making its way into that room. Ideally here, the hydrogen would start to, uh, to push the oxygen down. Which I think it is going to do. The oxygen down here is not super dense, but I think this is working now or should be working now. It's not pipe blocked. Oh, it's because the pipes are not built. There we go. Now there is a possibility actually, I didn't check beforehand. How hot is the natural gas? 37 degrees Celsius. That's not super hot, but it's also not super cold. We are pumping this natural gas through the base. It is only the left-hand side of the base. And so hopefully it doesn't have a huge impact on temperature. But if it does look like it's going to start heating the base up, we could always go ahead and uh, replace those normal pipes with insulated gas pipes just to make sure that all that heat radiates out. But there we go. The uh, gas is being pumped over into here. We have now got 1,900, about 2,600. We've got quite a bit of natural gas coming in now. And so hopefully, we should be able to start making an infinite number of berries, which is pretty cool. Under consumables, I would love to disable gristle berries. I do not want any of our duplicates eating gristle berries whatsoever. That does also remind me, we should probably put a fridge down in here. The reason for that being that I think we're going to make a lot more gristle berries than we do stuffed berries. And for now, it's going to make sense to store those gristle berries in the fridge that's right next to the grill so that when our duplicate needs to, you know, access them, he doesn't have to run all the way down over to the fridge over here to get that food. So we'll hook that up. Over here, we will specify that we do not want gristle berries or bristle berries in here. And this guy over here, as soon as he gets built, we want to make sure that this guy is only storing gristle berries and bristle berries. Nice. And now he is making our first stuffed berries we can see natural gas is at 2000 grams beautiful he's made the first one and now i don't know if our duplicates will automatically eat the best thing first this is actually full of meal lice i'm gonna mm, i was gonna say i'm gonna untick meal lice i'm gonna untick these guys here we don't want any of this stuff in here right now we can keep the meal lice in but everything that's not meal lice can come out to make room for the stuffed berry but i assume that they will eat the best item available. So if they come over here and they see a stuffed berry, they'll come in, they'll grab the stuffed berry and then they'll eat it. That's my assumption at least. We'll see whether or not that's actually the case in just a second here. Blueprint wise, we've got eight, eight pakus, eight fish that we could take. I will take the Dreklet and we'll uh, instantly go ahead and wrangle that guy and drop him off over here. Do we have Dreklet set? We do. Beautiful. Okay. I think we can store up to like six Dreklets in this room here. So we've still got quite a bit of space uh, for more Dreklets, which is fantastic. Again, now that this is set up, I am going to go ahead and lock this door as well. I don't want my duplicates going in there. I would love for you guys though to put an airflow tile right about there. And so ideally, we would be actually gaining natural gas. Like we're backing up on natural gas in here. That doesn't seem to be the case just yet. But it also does seem like what's happening right now is he's making one stuffed berry and then waiting for the gas stove to fill up, or the gas range, sorry, to fill back up again before he uses it. And I actually don't know how much you can store. Right now, he does have over five kilograms of natural gas. I don't know if it tells me how much space this guy has in it. It doesn't, but apparently it can hold more than 5,000 kilograms. That's fine. And so I think that is actually working just as intended. I think this is all working as planned. I will put an airlock here as well. It's not strictly necessary, but we might as well. We can also get rid of these ladders now. That is done. We've got rid of this finally, so we can actually go ahead and put down our space heater. 
like so. And whilst we're at it, we might as well go ahead and throw down a thermo sensor as well. I'm going to put it as far away from the heat sensor as possible, just to make sure that the entire room is at that higher temperature. What we don't want to do is put this right next to here so that this pepper plant grows, but the rest of these don't. So we'll put that down. We will, of course, hook that up with power. Uh, and I think power is actually, oh man, quite a ways away from this. So we'll go up like so. And again, try and keep it in the walls for decor purposes. And then from there, automation wire, again, in the walls where possible over to here. And this guy we want to set to be active when the temperature is below 35 degrees Celsius. We do have food poisoning. Oh my goodness. Why is food poisoning an issue? I could see why slime lung could be an issue. It looks like our natural gas does have slime lung, which is to be expected right now and is not great. There is, however, food poisoning in here. How has food poisoning made it in there? The stuffed berry? Oh, it all has food poisoning. How have we managed that? Can we disinfect this? I assume the answer is no, right? Like we can disinfect the fridge, but we can't disinfect the food inside of the fridge. It might finally be time. Let me check real quick though. That didn't, uh, oh, maybe that did work. No, it didn't. The food poisoning germs are dying slowly, which I guess is good, but it might actually finally be time to set up an infirmary of some description, which I think they actually call a, um, a hospital and or a clinic. So what do we need for a hospital? Sick duplicates assigned to the medical building located within a hospital are less likely to spread a disease. It needs medical equipment, a toilet, a mess table, no industrial machinery, and a max size of 96. The clinic requires a massage table, no industrial machinery, and all the other same stuff there. So under medicine here, let's go ahead and throw down a massage table because it's required. Um, and actually, I guess what we'll do is we'll throw down the toilet first because the toilet is required. And I guess we'll put that right at the back of the building here. So like right about there. And then we will, of course, have a sink right in front of that to make sure that our duplicates wash their hands when they use it. That does remind me, it could be the case. I noticed here that our duplicates come in, use the bathroom and then leave through this door. I don't see why they would. But for example, if Stinky needed to go to the research station, to the supercomputer, he could use the bathroom and then run out this way. So we should get rid of this door block that in and make sure they go through this door here if they need to get down to the water. That could be the reason why we have some food poisoning. So I'll try to get rid of that. But back over here with the uh, hospital, we'll put down a massage table. And I guess we'll also throw down a sick bay. Allows duplicants to administer basic treatments to sick duplicants. The duplicate must possess the bedside manner skill to treat peers. Okay, so we'll throw that down as well, like that. And whilst we're at it, we might as well go all out and put down the um, apothecary as well, which is... Apparently not in stations, really? I thought it was. Is it under medicine? It is. Okay, we'll throw that down right about there as well. And I think that should, once that's built, fulfill the requirements for being a hospital, at which point we can always go ahead and quarantine some of our sick duplicates. I don't think that food poisoning is one of those things that's going to spread from person to person. I think it's more so just indicative of a problem with our uh, food source, right? So I don't know if the quarantine is necessary right now, but we will go ahead and set this up nonetheless. It's going to be useful for uh, future endeavors, even if it's not too useful just yet. So if we want this to be a hospital, it's missing a mess table. Oh, wow. Okay. So it actually needs somewhere for them to eat as well. That is fine. A mess table can be squeezed in, I guess, here. It's not perfect. I kind of liked having a tile of space between each uh, machine here, but that'll do. That will... Uh, get the job done. And as soon as that mess table is down, that should become a, a fully fledged hospital. I'm going to put a slightly higher priority on this door here because I would very much so like to block that off just in case that is what's causing the issue. Um, and also I'm going to put a slightly higher priority on uh, wrangling this Draco as well. Our duplicates have just got so much stuff to do, especially Hassan, who is the only one I think right now who can wrangle. He's also doing all of the farming up here. You can see he's running backwards and forwards. He's the one who's got food poisoning and he's doing the farming. He's doing the Drekos. He's doing the uh, the hatches. He's got just so much work on his plate right now, which is not ideal. We really do need to make sure that uh, other duplicates can do that work as well. Speaking of which, we now have Franke, who I guess we'll give farming to, to try and get him to be able to, uh, to tend to those crops as well when Frankie's busy doing other stuff. I am still intrigued as to whether or not they eat the uh, the stuffed berry. I guess we could look at their skills here and see what is affecting them. It looks like people are still eating gristly meals. And so at least right now, people are still eating the meal lice. Eventually, we will tell them to not eat the meal lice. But for now, I think we need to get a couple of cycles ahead on the stuffed berry because of the fact that 
the stuffed berries are so calorie dense and we only make two of them per day, that means that it's going to take, you know, four days before we have eight available for all of our duplicates to eat. And so if we told our duplicates not to eat meal lice right now, only two duplicates would be able to eat the stuffed berry because we only have two and the rest of the duplicates would just starve until their stuffed berries were ready. And so we'll give it a couple of cycles. Once we have an, a good number of stuffed berries ready to go, we can go ahead and tell them to stop eating uh, meal lice and start eating solely the stuffed berries. And hopefully the morale will be, uh, will be better for it. Uh, there is polluted oxygen in here. Oh, I'm a fool. Oh my goodness. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, that's not what I want to do. That is not what I want to do at all. I'm a fool. I need to unlock this door, my friends. I didn't put a filter in. Isaac, you madman. I didn't put a filter in, and so now all of the other stuff in here is being pumped out as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, real quick, damage control. I'm going to put a gas pump in this room here. We're going to disable this one first, and let's make that like a super high priority. And then I'm going to disable, I'm going to uproot these, put a gas pump here, and start pumping out the polluted oxygen, and I think also the carbon dioxide as well, whilst we're at it. So it's just hydrogen and oxygen in here. And then, given that we're going to move this water anyway, let's also set up the new water lock whilst we're at it. Ideally here, we want the same setup we've got right here. So we want water. I would like this ladder to still be usable. So I'm thinking something like this with a tile here, and then the water going here. That could cause a bit of an issue, I guess... If we have the water lock, we probably don't need the uh, the manual airlock here, and we can probably move this over by one. The reason that I'm thinking of moving this over by one to have it here, so we have a wall down here, and across like this, we get rid of these two tiles, and then it comes up on this side as well, like this. If we do that, that means the Dracos can't get through the water, but it also gives us space to put a um, an Atmo suit check, so that if anyone does want to go through into this area, they get the suit and then go in. Yeah, I think that's going to be the preferred way of doing this. Like I said, for now, this area down here is not so bad that they need an Atmos suit on. Although, thinking about that real quick before they build it, that's too high. I need to bring it down by one because they need to be able to uh, cancel that. They need to be able to actually climb in. And previously, that was a bit too too high up. So, yeah, they'll, they'll figure this out. Delete that. Delete that. So, I want something more... Like this, I believe. And then this is going to be on this side, like that. Yes, I believe that is what I want here. I would like a priority 7 deletion on this door as well. And also some deletion on these tiles while you're at it, if you've got the time. We do already have water being pumped here, although I think it might be polluted water. It is, although we've also got clean water here as well, so we can use that. Actually, we don't need this anymore, so let's get rid of that. Let's do a little bit of tidying up here. We'll get rid of these tiles. Uh, and these, actually, no, let's not do that, Isaac, you fool. You can get rid of some of these, like the ones that go past here, but everything on this side can be cancelled because we can just put down the liquid vent right about there and then hook in to the pre-existing water line, like that. Nice. So yeah, we do need rid of the ladders, if possible, as well as the, uh, the pipes behind them. So buildings, and we need rid of like these few ladders here so that we can actually build a couple of tiles. Again, we're going to make those a slightly higher priority on the deletion. And then this is going to go like that. And we can also get rid of uh, this ladder. And that means we are going to have to get rid of this tile as well. But that is fine. It does make this room a little smaller for our Drekos. But I think that's okay. And so essentially, we're just going to move this water lock over to here and get rid of the, uh, the Atmos suit check, at least for now. Whilst we're doing that, I'll also put like a priority 8 deletion on this. And we'll seal this room off just so that nobody attempts to go down here without an Atmos suit, because that would not be good. It's not terrible. I think they would survive, but ideally they wouldn't They wouldn't do that. There's no reason for them to go down here right now. So we'll get rid of that, and then we'll build like a priority nine tile right about there. And then everything should be good. I have disconnected the power wire somewhere. That is fine. We can reconnect that like so. The Dreco is in water there, but I'm... Ooh, can they go through water? You know what? I guess we can put an airlock, a mechanized airlock here again and cancel this one. I really didn't think they'd be able to move through water like that. That's okay. Again, we can always wrangle them back in there. Uh, we do need ladders. Our, our friend here is stuck. So let's ladder this up. Oh my goodness. This is a mess in here, isn't it? Let's mop that up. It's okay, guys. Things, they need to get worse before they can get better. And this is definitely the point at which things are worse before they get better. 
But this is fine. I don't think we can mop this up, can we? No, so we have to pump this out in uh, in some regard. And also, ideally, before we get rid of this, we get rid of the hydrogen. Like, we pump that back in here as well. Speaking of hydrogen, I did want to put down a gas pump. Oh, my goodness. This episode went off the rails real quick. They've still not unlocked this door. Please, my... Oh, it's because this door's locked, you madman. Oh, my goodness. Unlock this door, please, so that you can go unlock the other door. That is going to release some natural gas out, but there's not much we can do about that right now. Also, we're not getting the... Um, Natural gas through because of the fact that this is overpressurized. I don't want it open. I want it on auto, please. Same is true for this one. I want it on auto so that they can get through, but they don't if they uh, if they can avoid it. Now the Drekos can't get through, which is great, despite the fact that they're already out. Oh my goodness. Please wrangle these Drekos when you get a free moment. Oh my goodness. Yeah, things went off the rails real quick here. Like things broke down pretty fast. I need you to uproot this plant as well. So that you can actually build the ladder and get out. That is priority nine. It's the best we can do. Please don't pee in here. We do have new duplicates available. I will say no, and I'll take the briar seeds. We also have skills that are available to assign. Bubbles, you can do crop tending as well. So you can help with Hassan. This is done. So hopefully if he needs the bathroom now, he will run to the bathroom. No! Who made a mess? Stinky, why... Oh my goodness, I thought nobody was down here. Why are you down there? Let's delete that. The mess down here is not a problem because no one's down there. I should have noticed by the fact that the stress meter is going up like that. Both Stinky and Frankie are the ones who are who are trapped. Still no idea what's going on with this tile that's causing them to disinfect it so regularly. Mima, don't you dare go down there. Get up here. And please, somebody, anybody, build a priority nine tile. No, my Drekos! Oh, okay. Real quick. Priority 9 on the Dreco, please. Can I get, like, a, a, a high priority wrangle? I don't think I'm going to get it, because I think Hassan is is out. Oh, no. They, they fixed it. Okay. Priority... Bert, don't you dare go down either. Get over there, and then priority 9 on the tile, whilst our Dreco is inside. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be 50-50, right? As to whether or not we get this Dreco back. Actually, you know what? Let's... Dig out this area here. I'm just going to put a door here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our Drekos back. And then as soon as we have the Drekos back, we'll put the door down. The door will already be down. And we'll just stop our... And we'll lock it so no one can go through it. So for now, they can get in. They can go and clean this tile, which they seem to love doing for some reason. Yep, go ahead. Clean that tile. Make sure it's nice. And Yep. If anyone knows what that is about, please let me know. Is everyone so busy? That they can't deal with this this over here the fact that this gas pump is priority nine. Oh, it's the rock the rock here is the reason they can't get to it gosh dang it priority nine please on the rock deletion i know i'm setting everything to like priority nine and that's why nothing is like it's taking a while to get everything done but here we go i think we're i think we're onto something here so real quick disable this building please because i don't want them pumping everything out i, I want that to be priority nine as well as all the other stuff here. Because I haven't put any uh, gas filters down yet. I need to uh, delete some of these. Actually, I'm a fool. I put down a gas filter here. Okay, so it's now many, many cycles later. And I think I have finally managed to solve the problem here. It's now cycle 131. I'm not quite sure what cycle it was when we left off. But you can see now that we have hydrogen only in the top section here. A lot more hydrogen than we had originally. I've piped out all of the hydrogen that was on this side of the waterlock. So next episode, we can quite safely get rid of this waterlock here. And there's no hydrogen around here for our, uh, for our duplicates to breathe. It's all clean oxygen. Oh, well, slime lung oxygen maybe, but still relatively clean oxygen that we can take the slime lung out of in the future. Over here, there is a bit of polluted oxygen. I'm working with the odorizers to get rid of that right now. And I think we're pretty much there. I think this is pretty much good to go. I, I, we do have airflow tiles all along here. I think that's fine. I think the hydrogen and the oxygen are at a pretty good balance here. Uh, we are going to have to get rid of this farm tile, I think, and just have that be uh, not a farm tile that does anything. So we'll go ahead and delete that right about now. And then the rest of these can go back to being mealwood, plant, copy, and paste. Of course, we'll replace the uh, deodorizers with mealwood once the uh, polluted oxygen is all gone. And actually, it looks like it's pretty much all gone already. There wasn't too much of it to begin with. And so I think this is actually more effective than it was at the start of the episode. You can see down here, we have got a ton of natural gas now, which is great. I think the only problem with that setup is that 
potentially, well, I've seemed to have disabled a pipe up here, which we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and fix like so. But I was thinking also it might be a problem that this is too dense. Although this doesn't seem that dense right now. So maybe that's not going to be an issue. Maybe once we break the water lock, everything in here will become a little less dense and hopefully everything becomes kind of okay. The base as a whole is actually becoming pretty oxygen light. And so we could maybe do with throwing down some more diffusers. Oh, we're out of algae. Oh, that would make sense. Ah, okay, so it's finally time to re-engage our algae distillers, or maybe even just go and dig out some of the massive amounts of algae that we still have around the base. But we'll do that at the start of the next episode. For now, um, I want to go ahead and deconstruct these three deodorizers and also sweep everything that is in here at a priority eight. Our poor Drekos, they've been through enough into this episode. We've been invading their habitat all episode long. They've still not wrangled these two guys down here, but that's fine. I'm sure we'll get to that. Eventually, there's no way to prioritize that by the looks of it, so that is fine. But they're gonna clear all that out. We now have natural gas ready to go. Yep, it's being pumped up into here. This guy is banked up with 10 kilograms of natural gas, and this guy has got 25 and even more kilograms of natural gas being stored up in there as well. And so hopefully, going forward, we'll be able to continually feed our duplicates with the stuffed berries. Uh, if we look in our fridge right now, how many stuffed berries do we have? We have got 4,000 grams, 4 kilograms of stuffed berries. I'm not quite sure how many kilograms one stuffed berry weighs, but I will for now go ahead and tell our duplicates not to eat meal ice and instead to eat stuffed berry. We've got 17,000 kilocalories worth of stuffed berry right now, which should be enough to keep our duplicates going. Stress is a little bit high right now. I think Mima is hungry. Low oxygen and soggy feet. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so we'll, we'll figure out the oxygen thing in the next episode. We'll come back. We'll make that work. We will replant our mealwood in here. Uh, let's quickly bump these deodorizers up to get those things taken care of. And I think everything should be pretty much good to go there. Hopefully, our systems are pretty self-sustaining. The base did a pretty good job. We don't need this big old pipe. I'm not quite sure what this is for, but this can be deleted. It does have hydrogen and chlorine in it for some reason. We are going to let little bits of that out into the base. Actually, you know what? I'll cancel that. I'll leave that pipe here for now, just because I don't want that hydrogen and chlorine in the base. I'm not quite sure what that pipe was for, but we'll leave it there for the time being. Uh, the deodorizers are gone, so let's copy and paste. And there we go. That should get everything back over here, back up and running as usual. Our Drekos should be back to their normal selves. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll get a, a glossy Dreco sometime soon. We got a 21% chance with this guy, only a 3 with this guy. And then this guy has an 11% chance. So not super high chances there, uh, but chances nonetheless. This guy has a 21% chance as well, one of our uh, escapees. So we'll try and get him back in there as soon as possible in the next episode. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of Oxygen Not Included there. As always, if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more going forward, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.